Hi, this is AP Psych Review, Understanding Experimental Design with Mr. Chuck Shellhorn. One of the things that I use with my students is uh, this idea of uh, graphics and how to put processes in uh, graphic format. And so what I've got here is I, I've got the, uh, the hypothesis. You're going to have that in an if-then form. When you have it in an if-then form, then you can make the prediction of the, the, the hypothesis. So if A happens, then B happens. And so when you're talking about a, a hypothesis with psychology, it could be something along the lines of if people take drug X, then they will have effect Y. When you do that, you can create a, a context in which you are making a prediction of cause and effect. And that's the, that's the goal of an experiment, is to determine cause and effect. Now, when you do set up an experiment, hopefully you're going to have random selection of your subjects. And once you have your subjects selected, then you're going to be able to create a random assignment of your uh, subjects in either the experimental group or the control group. Now, the experimental control group are going to be as close to identical in their situations as you can humanly make them. And so when we're looking at the circumstance, the only difference is going to be the application of the independent variable to the experimental group. And that is going to be key right there, is the independent variable is applied to the experimental group. The control group is your comparison group. It is your group that has no variables applied to it and has as close to identical a circumstance as you have to the experimental group. Once your independent variable is applied, you then have to have a, an independent measure of some sort. If your experiment is testing the effect of caffeine on reaction time, then caffeine is going to be your independent variable, and then reaction time is going to be your dependent measure. What if it is music on memory scores? So it's going to be you know listening to Mozart, and then the dependent measure is going to be memory scores on a particular little memory quiz that you give. But you're looking at the effect of one variable on another. And so um, once you get scores on that dependent measure, and you have scores from both your experimental and your control groups, then you can look at what are called levels of significance. And that's typically the 0.01 or 0.05, and that's going to be the likelihood that your differences between the two groups are a result of chance. The closer to zero you have, and in this case 0 0.01 is a 99% chance that your results are not from chance, that they really are results that were variable A is causing variable B to occur, that's going to be really important. So levels of, levels of significance are going to be an important aspect of any uh, experiment that is going to hold any weight if you want to get published, for example. But you're going to compare the two groups. And when you compare those two groups, are you, are, are you going to get differences? Do you have differences? And if you do, what is their level of significance? So that's uh, uh, experimental design in a nutshell. There are other kinds of experimental design. This is the most basic uh, between-subject experimental design. Hope this helps you out.